guys are back oh my god wait what are you guys seeing what are you guys seeing out here what do you what are you guys noticing you guys notice something are you guys noticing something out here it, i'm outside i'm outside we're back outside guys guys we are back out in the yard look at this you got some really well we don't really have too much right now it's the beginning of spring. We don't have too much right now. Hey, it's an important day here. So the only flowers we got out of the crocuses, which I don't have any in this corner of the yard. But um, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys know something. We're gonna have the the formal anniversary in a week. But this today is a very important day to me. Okay, why would March 9th be an important day to me? Do you know? It's only been important. This is the first. This is the first time it's been important. Why? Why would it be important? Tell me what you think. Why is March 9th important? What happened on March 9th last year? Okay, so our one year anniversary is the fifteenth, and we're definitely doing a Periscope on the fifteenth. March 9th is when I left New York City. It's when I left New York City. I left New York City on March 9th. Um, and you know, I left New York city. I saw an apartment there. I, I was there just a couple of days ago. Um, but I'm like going every other week now and just for a couple of days. So it's when I came back and not so long after, you know, we're going to see, we're going to see that cherry tree over there bloom in the next two weeks. And then things are really going to pop off. But look, it's important. And I think it's important to recognize just how far we've come over this last year. Massive, massive changes this past year. I really hope that you guys have been doing um, been doing the deep work, been doing the deep work, been doing the shifts. I can tell you that I've, I've obviously really appreciated all of the support that I've gotten from you guys throughout this entire process. I mean, what a roller coaster it's been on, right? What a roller coaster. We started these these periscopes last year, just talking about all sorts of crazy conspiracy stuff. Um, many of those things, which are coming coming out true now, right? With the passports, the that's the that's the new thing that's been really pushed in the UK about not being able to to, to go to certain events um, unless you have proof of a, of a certificate of vac vaccination identity identification, right? Certificate of Vaccination Identification. Uh, right? Let's spell that one out. But well, I'm going to talk about that because I got, I got some stuff I want to mention with that. That's very important. It's part of the announcement. But this has been a big year of growth. Okay? And we've seen how this evolved over time, became like, you know, a big rally group. And then, you know, things went a little crazy. We're in a new year now, new spring coming, a lot of big shifts, and I hope you guys did the work and that we're, we're prepared to move forward now. I want to talk a little bit about growth. I want to talk about shame in particular, because I think that if there's anything, if there's anything that I want to hammer home to you guys when it comes to the process of growth, it's shame. And I think that actually this is the fatal flaw with most of personal improvement out there. All right, I'm, I'm going to explain this. Just talking to a client, this is why we're a little bit late. You know, sometimes if I got the time, we're going to extend the call a little bit longer. Talking about uh, his situation, you know, he was feeling things in his relationship. He's feeling like emasculated in his relationship. Now, here's the thing. He has a great relationship, great woman. And the kind of things that he was feeling emasculated about were very small things. Things that, you know, really as a man, you should, there are probably benefits and you probably shouldn't think too much into them. You shouldn't really read too much into them because um, they're mostly affectionate. The point of this is that this stuff was getting to him. But actually, the reality is it wasn't those things. What it was is that, like all fall relationships, this was a vector for him to learn, see things about himself. And this had been stuff that came up in other contexts prior in our time working together this sort of sense of feeling of emasculation. And it made him want to lean out of the relationship. It made him want to pick fights, okay? But what was actually happening, what was actually happening was that he was afraid to speak to his needs. 
Not necessarily even with her. Turned out in this case, it was his father. And having an issue with your father, a dominance issue with your father, is a great way to feel emasculated. But the point here I wanted to talk about is that self-improvement very, very often, I mean, it's a massive improvement from the low-level stuff, which is that I can't help, my, help myself, I can't help my life, my life sucks, I'm a loser, I'm always going to be a loser, I hate other people who are successful, I hate other people. Self-improvement's a big jump up from that because self-improvement's like, hey, no, I can do things differently. I can change, I can, I can transform things in my life. I can learn, right? It's very much about learning and action. Do this, learn this, right? The problem, the problem is that it doesn't really do too much to deal with shame. And it mostly thinks that shame will go away if you simply succeed. And it's true that it does minimize it often. But obviously, it doesn't get rid of it entirely because you see this all the time with people who still have all sorts of shame. Um, still feel like crap, even though they're really successful, attractive, you know, girls are interested in them, still ha struggle with confidence issues. I, I work with a lot of high-performing guys like that. All right. So why this stuff matters, the next level of things is about who you are and becoming comfortable with who you are, right? We've said this before. I think this is, comes from Dodson's book, Levels of Energy. You are what you have or don't have. You are what you do or don't do. And then you are what you are. That's what it is. You are what you are. And the problem with shame is that shame tells you that you're not okay as you are tells you you're not okay as you are. I'm excellent. I'm excellent. I appreciate that. Actually, I, did, I didn't show it off because we're not doing a... It's, a... it's the first... Back to Lee Lay. This is great stuff. I'm going to show it on this way. This is great stuff. It's um, not wine. It's like a little bit of a fortified drink. It's like 17%. There's also a rosé and a red version. Man, this stuff is great. If you ever make a Vesper, like the Bond drink... They use Lee Lay in it. Now, that's actually how I got into it because I got a bottle of Lee Lay to make the Vesper. They just called for a splash of Lee Lay. And I was like, I have this whole bottle. So I was like, well, what are you supposed to do with Lee Lay? What am I supposed to do with the rest of this Lee Lay? So it, and it then became like a spring tradition. So I get every spring. Don't really drink it outside of spring. Um, my, my family probably goes through two to four bottles over spring. And then we're done. Early spring only. But look, um, Shame. Let's get back to shame. Shame in these pockets of shame. It's, it's, it's crazy. It is crazy, and it's crazy how persistent they can be. But the problem with self-improvement is that self-improvement tells you that you will, you will be okay if you do something different. Not if you are who you are. Not if you be who you become who you, who you actually are. Now, it's true, of course, that some people need, like, who are they? And this is where you get into the issues with definitions and you have to increasingly feel your way through things because words don't always do justice to it. Because you have things like, well, I like, I'm, I'm this kind of person. I do these things. It's like, well, is that you or is that a pattern you identify with? But who you are as at a core is a very different thing. It's a very, very different thing. And so a lot of the self-improvement stuff is designed to attack patterns. Stop doing this pattern. And it's good. You, maybe this pattern is very bad. But a lot of times the emphasis is trying to get you to become somebody who you're not. Try to get you to eat food that your body doesn't associate with. Okay, look, I like meat. I'm always going to eat meat. As far as I know, I'm always going to eat meat. Some people actually really don't do well with meat. Um, not many of the people, but some people really feel better on like vegetarian diets. There's, no, there's just no doubt that that's true. On the other hand, some people who are really obsessed about the vegetarian thing, they do terrible. They do terrible in those diets. They, like, you know, Grimhood almost died from being on that diet. But this is a great example of it in one area that's maybe more tangible, which is that you need to figure out what works for you. You need to figure out, like, really self-improvement, and that's why self-improvement goes from addition to subtraction as you get deeper down there. Because it's like, 
I picked up some good things and I picked up a lot of crap. It's like you're on the path and you're like, oh, this could be useful. This could be useful. And then suddenly you're carrying a pretty fucking heavy bag. And you're like, well, you know what? I never really use this. I'm hoarding. So let me just dump this stuff. I feel a lot lighter now that I've been dumping all of these patterns, even if they're ostensibly good, I picked up along the way. But why does this stuff matter? Why does shame matter so much? Well, real growth is about getting rid of shame. Because when you free up these blockages, then your energy just goes through the roof, goes through the fucking roof, right? You can do, you can manifest so much more. And you also have your boundaries get stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay. Why is this important, though, on a structural level? It's important on a structural level because... My wife's in the kitchen there. It's important on a structural level because there's a really good tweet. I'm jump into it like this. There was a really good tweet I saw recently, and they said something like, the, the really disturbing thing is not that you know, the elites have so much external power but that we have such little internal power and that that's the reason that everything is the way it is. That's the reason everything is the way it is, is because we actually lack the internal strength and fortitude to chart our own course. And I was talking to my wife about this and I was, and I think this is important for us to, to hear because we have to really drop all sorts of, um, you know, we, we want to try to drop the negative emotions around these, these groups and these people because they're playing their role from a higher perspective. They're all playing their role. They're bringing to light l the light in their own way by playing the role of the dark. But the other piece of it that's really relevant here is that they are, um, how do I put this? They really look at us like children because, frankly, we act like children. And you can see it right now. You can see how, how many people who are just begging. They're begging for someone to tell them what to do. And that comes from shame. That comes from shame. Because if you have shame, right? What do they always say about Trump? Trump was shameless. The shameless person. And notice how that's been changed in our lexicon to be a bad thing. Oh, if you don't have shame, if you're shameless... It's at best a mixed word, but it's normally a negative connotation. Isn't that really interesting, right? Someone who doesn't have shame. Yeah, and, and look, we can talk about politeness, but the reality is that true politeness is honoring other people's choices, right? Honoring other people's choices. And humility is understanding your insignificance compared to the larger plan. I mean... I am a, ve I'm a tool on the vehicle of whatever God's purpose is for me. I know everything that's happened to me, everything that will happen to me is a, is a contract that I agree to. And I'm happy to go through it. Happy to go through it because there's a purpose to it. And I know I have the strength and resilience to get through it because I am, like I said, a vehicle. Right? I'm constantly fortified. I'm fortified by you guys too. Although my perspective would be that you've been sent to me to fortify me. And I've been sent to you for my own purpose, maybe an awakening or fortifying you. And that's how we support each other. But, you know, arrogance comes when you start to believe it's all you and only you. And that's a very left-hand path, right? That it's, it's all the power I've accumulated. No, no, my power is, I only derive power from alignment. Out of alignment, my power disappears. Uh, I am personally not able to generate power otherwise. Um, people with a different energetic construct can take it from others, but that has never sat very well with me. And to the extent that I ever dabbled in that with dating made me feel so disgusting. It was so against my energetic structure, I, I was not able to do it. But actually made me struggle a lot early on because there were very, very few companies in the early days of pickup that were not totally infested with dark energy. I mean, you had the, like, the, that's why I like the social man because the social man was mostly positive. Um, they still had dark energetic pockets, 
But I think that at the same time, if you don't understand the dark, then you're not going to get better with women because women have a dark side, which is the purpose of the red pill, right? So anyway, to stay on topic here, the reason that we found ourselves in this position is because we've had so much shame. And a lot of that shame has come from family, generational trauma, constantly passed down. But we break out of that shame now. And you're seeing this. And this is all this stuff of people finding these sort of bigger families. And it doesn't mean that we don't love our regular families. It doesn't mean we don't want to be with them. But we also want to be who we are. We want to be individuals. And we want to be accepted as individuals. That's a very important part of our journey at this point in time. We're breaking out of control structures. And that includes family control structures. But it also includes macro control structures. Because the only way that these structures are able to maintain themselves is by your shame. You notice this, like I, for instance, there's a lot of people trying to shame me. Shame culture, right? Political correctness is a shame culture. All this stuff is designed to lower your vibration, to bring you into a point of feeling unworthy so that you de-individualize and you reassociate with some bigger constructed body. Which is why, for instance, you could say that, like, they always talk about, like, mobs have different sorts of personalities, almost, from an individual. And so it's all about trying to deconstruct your individualism and bring you into some sort of collective control structure. And we've been in, involved with that, but we're not anymore. And so this inner work you can start to see. Yeah, well, the South is good at it, but to be honest... Um, you know, there's different, the less space you have, the more shame they're generally, well, I don't know. I don't think about that. New York is a very individualistic city. And unfortunately, at least it was historically, you have tons and tons of people there now, more and more who are sort of conformists. But uh, there's always been a, a spirit in New, New York that was based on individual ambition. And um, for all the sort of toxic crap, when the city was pre-COVID, it, it was still filled with a lot of that energy. Um, I think that other cities like D.C. didn't really have that. I would even say to a certain extent San Francisco. But I, anyway, I don't want to get in the weeds with this stuff. That's a whole different thing of trying to read the energies of cities. And frankly, most cities right now are not doing so well in America, except for Miami. Miami is probably the only city I've heard has good energy. And I can actually feel the energy of Miami from over here. So, but the point, I, the reason I want to talk about the shame stuff is because as we get rid of the shame, as we purge it, we not only we'll get what we want from relationships. We're not only going to feel more confident, impossible to be beaten down, but, but, bigger than that, we'll break down the control structure, right? Because the, con the, the system is actually a reflection of us. Now, you could, now, there can be a lag time, and we're experiencing the lag time, but the system is a reflection of us. And so this is where I want to get to now. I want to talk about uh, this announcement I have. And this has been inspired by, it was like, it was like a piece that was missing. It was inspired by Magenta's recent um, video. So check that out if you haven't. But, We are going to really be living side by side with this for a bit. The structure is breaking down around us, but there's going to be, like, it's not going to just all crumble over overnight. She has a pretty good accent. If you can't understand her accent, man, you got, you, you got to go up to uh, northern Britain. Get, get to the Midlands. Man, you're not going to understand anything they say. It is going to, um, how do I put this? We need to build our own physical communities. 
this is what I'm trying to say. We are we need to build our own physical communities because there is going to be a major push to and it's not going to succeed and but there is a large group of people that and depending on your country it'll be more large than another who believe that you got to get stuck and then you have to and only once you've been stuck jabbed if you get what I'm trying to say here then only once you've been jabbed, then can you participate in certain things. And you can tell they're already setting the narrative for that. We predicted this a year ago. We were made fun of for that. Predicted it a year ago. But they're doing it now. And the reality is that they're not going to be able to control everybody in that. And they're not going to be able to enforce it for everybody. It won't work. But we may be excluded from certain things. And so I want to just throw out here an intention that I have, an intention I have, okay? I, I don't consent either, but this is an intention I have, and it's, and it's starting to all come together now for me. That's why I said it was inspired by it, but I've been trying to figure this out for a while. Um, the reality is that, okay, I, I, work, I work with people, with guys who are on the ground, right? They're trying to date. And there's a real issue right now with people being able to, if you're dating, okay, you're maybe dating a girl and, and she's just like super deranged. Okay. You go out there, you're trying to meet women and they're super paranoid. They're super deranged that you're, you're having a hard time finding the women who are not caught in the control structure versus women who are, this is a problem. A lot of guys have been having now. I am not a matchmaker and I don't ever want to be a matchmaker. It's not feel zero alignment with that role. However, however, people have talked about how Twitter's a dating site. And people have talked about how people have legitimately met their partners on Twitter. And so what I want to do is I want to start to bring a larger community together, a larger community of people together. And as the weather gets warmer in the Northern Hemisphere here, um, I think it's a pretty good time to do it because my suspicion is that a lot of things outside of nature may be held back from people for a while or at the very minimum will not hold a strong appeal for people outside of the control structure. And so I'm kind of thinking about like, do we do some sort of big retreat at some point in the, in the late summer? I don't know. What I, here's what I want, and here's what I'm asking for from you guys, is I want you guys to DM me on Twitter if you're in or if you want to help create this. If you want to help create this with me, because I, get, I can tell you guys, I am not a good uh, administrator, so to speak. I'm not, I'm not going to be the manager of this entire thing. But what I do want to do is lend my energy to try to bring all this together. We need to get a group of people. I need to talk to some of other, you know, female people in this field. But I want to create like a massive sort of party festival where neither masks nor nor the jab is required, right? And the reality is that we may not be able to all come to the same place, but it would be really great if we can at least create separate nuclei in different countries. So if we can't fly for a period of time, this all stuff is going to collapse. But why aren't we building this? You know, we have these, you know, some of us have these Twitter platforms and we have these Twitter communities, but if there was ever a time to bring them into person, I think that this, this sort of summer, the spring, summer, late spring, summer, it's a time to do it. It's a time to do it. Um, so I don't know what it looks like yet, but this is the announcement I have. I really want to create this. I'm getting energy even as I say it. I want to create some sort of big connecting thing so that we can, we can come together, people who are just tired. They want to operate outside the system. And I'm going to tell you why this is important for a lot of different reasons. All right, There's, This is important for a couple of very, very big reasons. One, it is a little bit of a matchmaking thing. Because assuming we don't have too many dudes at this party, that's why I got to work with some women to make this happen. Assuming we don't have too many dudes at this party, now even if we have a lot of dudes, it's going to be a really good friendship networking event. But I think a lot of people have been very lonely this past year. 
And this is going to be an opportunity for us to find like-minded people. I kind of take it for granted because I have so much love from all of you people that I, I always feel like if I wanted to meet somebody, I could, you know, there's, there's accounts that are with, there's like tons of accounts within, you know, a hundred miles of me, but to create something like this, where you have tons and tons of like-minded people for people who don't necessarily have the accounts. If we get a bunch of big accounts to do this, to bring it together, to, to seed it out there, we could get thousands of people to come, we get thousands of people in the same place. And I'm not talking about like trying to make any money off of this to the extent that there would even be a fee to come into it. It would be simply just to cover costs, right? But just to bring people into the same location and to create like a sense of community, a sense of normalcy again, right? Sense of normalcy again. And there won't be any restrictions. I'm not going to tell people, you know, if you did get, if you did get jabbed, if you, if you did get, um, if you, you do feel comfortable, you know, wearing a mask, I don't want to tell people that they can't come, but I want them to also understand that this is because everyone should have their own choice. Everyone should have their own choice, but I want it to be also understood that nobody else is going to be doing that. So if you feel comfortable with, with that, that's fine. But I mean, so th this is the first thing. It's going to build a community. It's, it's, it could help to maybe facilitate a couple of relationships, maybe, maybe some, maybe not relationships, maybe just some flings. But um, the really big thing here is that, let's be honest, this stuff isn't cool. It's not cool. The, none of the crap that they're putting on us, it's not cool. It's humiliating. It's, it's like, it's really lame, to be honest. It's really lame. And if you understand anything about, it's like it's Woodstock 2021. If you understand, it actually is, though, while a magic, that is actually the same kind of energy that we're bringing here. I mean, it's not the same. It's the same, relatively speaking, because that was used as like a benchmark moment for a movement. The difference is that that structure was that was a movement that was premature to breaking down the structure and was hijacked. We're not going to be hijacked. The second point of it is that um, my my kind of I'm not saying people aren't going to hook up, but I don't really feel like the energy like in the 60s and 70s free love thing was like really it was a hijacking, right? People got tired of it, and most of them went and got married again, but then they weren't super happy with their lives. This is going to be different. I mean, it's not a trad thing per se, but there's definitely a grounding back in like nature with this. There's definitely a grounding back in nature, back in families, back in authentic connection between people. I think it, th there's going to be elements of this that are that are... Let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. This is going to be what I think the spiritual spirituality community wished that they had been because we're not just catering to those kind of people um, and there's going to be tons of masculine energy coming into it. But we're actually creating a, a community, not simply like a, like a feminine, feminine retreat. Treat. I have nothing wrong with that. But this is going to be like literally there's going to be men there, successful guys, who are not just interested in using like authentic communication language. There's going to be like a lot of like big dick energy, as we like to say, big, big fucking dick energy coming to this retreat. That's what I see. And that's what the women are going to be drawn towards. That's why it's going to be different. It's not going to be a place where it's like, oh, let's go express our feelings and stuff. I'm not going to say there, there won't be like opportunities to do some healing there. But the point of this is really to like, I want people to be normal. Let's put it that way. Let's have let's let's have some normal fun, right? Let's have some normal fun and let's celebrate the fact that there are other people like us out there and that we're building a new world because that's indeed what we are doing right now. We are building a new world. And the fun that we're going to be having, okay? The fun we're going to be having in the success, the prosperity creating a whole network of people who are going to support each other, right? We kind of have this with Twitter. Let's bring it to real life. I'm going to be reaching out over the coming days to a lot of big people on Twitter and see if they want to be a part of it. Because I want to build this thing. I have no interest in claiming ownership over it. I just want to add energy to it to make it happen. 
because this is about creating a completely new world, a completely new, completely new structure. And while those other people are having to jump through hoop after hoop after hoop to fucking wipe their ass, we're going to be out eating good food, maybe having some good wine, you know, and just really connecting and making money, making families, just being successful across areas of life and really grinding with this planet. And they can watch us and they can think, oh, these people are crazy. It's like, wait, but none of them are following any of the rules and they're not dying and they're pretty happy and yeah, they can breathe, right? So, so look, this is, this is where I'm feeling with it. This is where my intention's at. I don't know the location. I'm going to be honest, it's probably not going to be um, Jersey because you're going to have to pick a state that's going to be friendly to this. And so I think there's a lot of to-be-determined stuff. I don't think I'm going to know. Here's my intention. My intention is to have a location set by May, and my intention is to have it occur over the summer solstice, right? Summer solstice is when I want to have this. Um, because we'll be outside, so longer sunlight's going to be good. But I also just want to be around during that energetic with a big group of people. I think it's going to be a big celebratory period in general. So, so that's what I'm looking at. But I don't know this place yet. But I have a feeling it probably won't be... It'll probably be in a more open state. So we'll see. We're going to work it out. Um, I just wanted to say, state that intention publicly so that you guys can help bring energy to it yourselves and we can all manifest it together. I got a couple more minutes. If you guys, yeah, I'm just having, my birthday's early June. My birthday's early June. So if I was doing that, it'd be June 5th is a date. That would be a hell of a birthday party though. Don't, I mean, don't tempt me Elvis. I didn't really think about that to be honest, but then it's going to be in Jersey. So quick, quick questions before I got to go. Cause I got to leave certainly by 6:20. Any quick questions here? Man, I'm so sorry to hear that. I've been hearing this all, all over, though. I mean, I know, I know people who have gotten it. And they, they, they're not even at the point of not wanting to just say it publicly. They haven't really come to terms with it, but they've been feeling terrible. I mean, they've been really feeling terrible. Um, at least they did for a long period of time, getting sick, having a lot of pains and stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a real shame. It's a real shame, but Washington state's a while away. I don't think Washington, to be honest, I mean, I don't want to do it in Colorado. I would love to go to Colorado. Well, well guys, to be honest, I can't go anywhere yet. So I have to figure that out. <laughs> can't go anywhere yet. So maybe I'll, I'll set this up and I won't be able to go this time, which would be a shame, but I would do that. I would do that. I would still try to set it up. I would still try to set it up for you guys, even if I couldn't attend. But um, Northern Georgia. Yeah, I, I've heard that stuff too. I feel like their soul's broken. But the reality is that that's what it's designed to do. It, it's designed to break the energetic structure in your body. It's designed to cut you off from um, God's source, right? It's designed to cut you off. So we'll see with that. I, I do understand that you can heal from it if you are already of a certain energetic, but it's, it's pretty bad, guys. It's pretty bad. Um, we'll see what the future brings. But I know, I know my choice with this stuff. Yeah, I, 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 let's just say this. You can't. However, everything is possible in the quantum. So if you were somebody who was already pretty far along and it happened, I got a message like I was actually trying to look for it today in my DMs. I actually noticed so many DMs I didn't respond to from months ago. Sometimes you just don't really you don't realize how many. Um, but yeah, it is basically permanent. However, if you were already relatively far along, and you were to really work at it, you would be able to um, change it to an extent. You would kind of be able to overwrite it. That's what Magenta said, and that, that really resonated with me. 
because I had been thinking to myself, it's like, well, it's not that people can't recover from it, but um, we're talking who who would be where they needed to be to be able to recover from it is such a slim number of people. Yeah, most of them, I mean, most of them would not get it, but th- maybe there were some that did early on. But there was someone who DM'd me a while ago and he asked me about this. He had gotten the first one. He really regretted it. And you could tell he was a high vibration individual. And I felt when I was talking to him, I don't know if he's watching this now, um, I really felt like he would be able to shift out of it because he was so aware that like so much of his consciousness was against what, what it was, the other consciousness, um, that I really felt that he would be able to shift it. And I think that, but it's a very small percentage. It's a very, very small percentage. Well, a lot of people have to do it because of their profession. So if you're in healthcare and early on they were just kind of pushing it and you might have felt some pressure from the job and maybe you didn't fully internalize it yet. Um, I think that that's what happened to a lot of people. But, you know, look, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I guess I'm informing here, but there's not, there's not really too much to... Yeah, exactly. She's a nurse. That, that's the same story that I heard from this guy. Those are the people that have... Uh, it's kind of funny, you know? I mean, it's not funny, but... They always laud the people for their experiments. Like the military with the Iraq war and everything after 9-11... It's like support our troops, support our troops as they abuse them. And now they're doing the same thing to healthcare workers. Support our healthcare workers and they abuse them. Anyway. But we're not going to talk too much about that stuff. We are going to be building a new future here. That's what, that's my intention. And I don't want to, they're collapsing guys. I think you can feel it. You guys can feel it, can't you? You guys can feel it. I think we can all feel it at this point. I don't know what's coming, but it feels like around the corner. It really feels around the corner. I don't know what's coming. Even as I say that, I get energy. It's around the corner, whatever this stuff is. And it's not going to collapse in a day. It's not going to be a single event. And probably we are going to have to completely nonviolently be a part of it. Completely nonviolently. I want to emphasize that for anybody who's super ridiculous. But it's, it's around the corner, guys. But... Um, I want to focus on building. I don't want to focus anymore, really. That was year one, and that's why I brought this conversation up initially, talking about, you know, this is the year since I came back, and I want to say on the year anniversary that my intention is not to be in opposition, so to speak, to this regime anymore. It's to build a parallel one, to be part of the construction of a parallel one. And I hope that you guys... Will be will be part of that too, so I'm gonna let you guys know in the coming weeks what I can what I can get up, what I can bring together, what kind of group I can bring together. But um, might as well use this platform while I still have it. So much love to all of you. As always, you can see it's you have the twilight. It's still early spring, but much love to all of you, and we will talk maybe Friday. Maybe Saturday, but later this week. I'll see you guys.